Well, a very warm welcome to the Easy Odds video cast. Premier League time it is as we look forward to four matches over the weekend, and one of them, of course, is the biggie. But it doesn't matter how big a match is, what fundamentally we're trying to do here on EasyOdds.com is garner a profit. So it doesn't matter whether it's Southampton, Swansea, or Chelsea versus Man City. Uh, to my left and to your right, wearing the English mustard jumper, is Tom the Power Pilot. Hope he's hot today. And next to me, is the very core, the very heartbeat of EasyOdds.com, the editor, Simon Blueblood Hopper, who's with us as well. Let's go straight into the action. It's Hull versus Newcastle. It's 18th versus 11th. And Tom, Newcastle, nine points from a possible 33 away from home. Yeah, their away form's pretty poor. It's oh. pretty poor of late as well. I think they've lost something like five away games in a row, albeit against difficult opposition, actually, in recent weeks. Um, it is a really tough match to call because they both can't each out each other out in terms of poorness. I mean, Hull aren't playing particularly well at the moment, not scoring many goals, got quite a lot of injury problems, but Newcastle have actually got quite a few injury problems as well. Yeah. But did you know, Paul, that Hull have won Tom. every single one of their home league matches so far in 2015? Every single one of the one game they've played so far. 100% record. 100% record, yeah. They beat Everton 2-0 that day. So we didn't so. need to mention that, did we? <laughs> we didn't need to mention that, but I'm clutching desperately as, as, as to why right. I Fair think enough. that Hull will win this game. And that is the only one I've got so far. Um, basically, all I've got is that Hull are not quite as bad at home as Newcastle are away at the moment. So I think Hull to win at 2.76 in the exchanges. I think they're 7 4 best price, uh, fixed odds. Is about okay on the whole within this match. Um, just looking at Newcastle, as I said, they've won, they've lost five in a row, albeit against poor opposition. And as you said, they're pretty poor away from home. Yeah. Uh, uh, not not too sure about uh, bringing in John Carver as uh, manager for the rest of the season. Um, quite a few injury problems as well. I don't think um, Papi uh, Cisse will be back for this game. He's been on African cover of the uh, Nations duty. Though Senegal are out. Apparently he's fatigued and possibly injured oh, for this game, so uh, so he might not play. Hull are in real need of some points, and they can actually leap out of the, the bottom three, um, albeit temporarily, if they can win this game. I think they're a little bit of value on the exchange at 2.76, so um, I've clutched at a few straws, so I'm going for a home win. Straws for Tom. Uh, anything for you to grab hold of, Mr Hopper? It's not really, Paul, to no. be honest. No, I think Tom pretty much sums it up. I think Hull, you know, obviously in terrible form, but I think they deserve to be marginal favourites. 7-4, to four, they are best price, with Newcastle 2-1. Yeah. to one. I mean, Hull average, since they got re-promoted, 1.17 home points per game. Newcastle over the same time, 1.03 points oh. per game. So normally, Hull are slightly better at home than Newcastle are away, as Tom said. However, I think the match odds cover that. I also think Newcastle are slightly below their normal level because of the John Carver situation, and they're not in particularly good form. I don't think the John Carver appointment is going to help. I know the players have said, you know, he's good, he should come in, but I think in their heart of hearts they would have preferred someone a bit bigger. Um, there's not going to be many goals by all, all accounts. Paul Hull normally go unders. Seven of their ten home league games this season have gone unders. Um, but unders are very well covered. One firm's as short as eight to 15 on under two and a half Gosh. goals, which is very short, isn't yeah. it? So... For me, it's going to be a no-bet match, and uh, I wouldn't expect a classic. No bet uh, from the Hopper. Um, what odds would it be that this game will be the last game shown on Match of the Day on Saturday night? Uh, pretty short odds, I would have thought. <laughs> Unlikely that this game will be. We're off to Stamford Bridge for Chelsea versus Man City, of course. First versus second. And uh, down through the years, this particular fixture, very little between the two sides, an aggregate goal output in the last five years, Seven for Chelsea, five for Man City Hulls. Good stat, Paul. Yeah. Very good stat. We do our research here, don't we? We do indeed. Um, yeah, Chelsea have been drifters during the week. Uh, they opened up on Monday around 19 to 20. Wow. Uh, they now sure. have gone up to 11 to 10, which probably looks about right, I'd say. Is that Mr. Costa's influence? Well, it, it is, and, and there's some other injury problems as well, which we'll go through, Paul. But um, I think Chelsea 11 to 10 is about right. Man City 29 to 10, mm -hmm. draw 13 to 5. Chelsea, uh, despite their problems, are unbelievable at home. 10 from 10 at home in the league this season. 25 from 29 since Mourinho came back, which is uh, absolutely rock solid. But City are good away from home now. The, 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 the early pedigree reign of occasional defeats at Cardiff and places like that has gone. He's had 30 away league games in charge now, and he's only lost six of them. So they're pretty obdurate on their travels. Um, I think the match will look about right for a very, a very good home side against a very good nice. away side. Uh, but the bet I, I like here, Paul... 
Um, because um, the market and punters always think there'll be goals in these big games because two world-class strike forces going head-to-head. Sky, obviously, Bill, Sergio Aguero and everyone else. But both teams not to score, I think, is a great bet. Wow. Here, um, which is the best price, 57 to 50. There's a couple of reasons for that. Firstly, Chelsea keep so many clean sheets at home. Um, eight of ten home league games this season have been clean sheets. Yeah. Only two visiting sides in the league have even scored at Stamford Bridge. Um, Mourinho should have, well, he can always put out a decent defence, even if players like Felipe Luis and Ivanovic can't make it back. He always has backup options, they'll always put out a solid side. Mm-hmm. Uh, and, and, and all three games at home against the top seven this season, uh, Arsenal, Spurs and West Ham, they've kept clean sheets. So they keep clean sheets against the better teams as well. I mean, you're basically getting 57 to 50 about a selection that's landed in 80% of Chelsea's home league games this season. Obviously, it'll be harder to keep a clean sheet against City sure. because they're the league's second best attack. However, they failed to score in the last two against Arsenal and Middlesbrough. They're clearly missing a Yaya Torre, who won't be uh, at this game because Ivory Coast have qualified for knockouts of, of the AFCON. Um, it's also interesting that in the last seven meetings between the sides, both teams have not scored in four of them. Mm-hmm. So this isn't always a high-scoring game like people think it might be. Um, so I think both teams not to score, 57-50, to 50, looks, looks a more than reasonable bet. And also... Fabregas and Costa may well not play, which is obviously a, a great aid to our bet because it's less likely both teams will score. There you go. Both teams not to score. Chelsea, Man City, is he right? But he's been right many times this season on uh, more, how can I put it, uh, left of centre bets. Uh, still to come, Arsenal, Villa, Southampton, Swansea. Let's get the view of Tom on this top of the table clash. And how much did the likely absence of a Costa sort of change your view of this particular game? Not a huge amount, to be honest. Um, uh-huh. He hasn't been in amazingly wonderful form at the moment. Has no, he? not lately, he's, no. I mean, he's scored loads of goals. No. But, um, I, I do agree with Simon um, that it should be a low-scoring match. I agree as well that 11 to 10 is about right on Chelsea. I was hoping they'd be a little bit shorter as they were earlier in the week uh, so I could uh, oppose them in some form, get Man City plus a quarter or something on the Asian handicap. But 11 to 10 is about, about right on a team that generally wins every single home match they play. Um I would probably go under two and a half goals, a little bit short of price, but probably a little bit of a, a, a safer bet because you keep one all on side. One all is probably the scoreline that might scupper Simon's bet, and it's, it's more likely than being 3 0, you know, sure. to, to, to scupper my one, which is why it's evens as opposed to 57 to 50. But he's landed in four of Chelsea's last six matches at home, mostly due to the fact that they keep so many clean sheets. Um, it's, it's happened eight times in total so far this season. Chelsea have only conceded 10 in 17 home matches this year. And uh, four of them were last Saturday against Bradford as well. So before then, they've conceded uh, six in 16 all season, which is a pretty decent return. Uh, Man City have gone under uh, three matches in a row, um, starting with a one-all draw at Everton. Then they failed to score in their two matches in a row, uh, two matches in a row at home as they lost 2-0 to Arsenal and Middlesbrough. It should be a really tight game. Um, neither team wants to, wants to lose, which is a stupid thing to say. I don't know why I said that. Obviously, neither team wants to lose, but... It should be a really tight game, which is why I mentioned towards under two and a half goals. And as Simon says, there's some uh, key personnel missing in the attacking sense for both sides. So uh, I don't see many goals. And, oh. and Paul, it should be noted, I was at Stamford Bridge last Saturday for Chelsea against Bradford. Yeah. And uh, Bradford put on an absolute masterclass. And I'm not sure uh, Sergio Aguero is in the same calibre as John Stead. So, you know, I'm not sure City have the correct firepower to, uh, to do, do what Bradford did. So did you see that tongue sticking out the cheek? It's gone right through there, John Stead, who is, uh, let's just say he's, um, he's an all-time great in the Easy Odds office in one way or another. Whether you believe us or not is another thing. Uh, great stuff from the boys there. Sort of psychologically going to the other end of the marketplace that you would naturally think of doing. Let's go to Arsenal versus Villa. It's 5th versus 15th, and Hobbs, in the last five years, this fixture has yielded over two and a half goals every time. Yeah, a, a slight surprise with that, that stat, Paul, yeah. because uh, obviously this season, Villa, you would not associate with goals at all. Um, however, I think, uh, I think this is a great chance to oppose Arsenal here. If, if I was going to take on one odds on team this weekend, it would definitely yeah, be Arsenal. Okay. I think they're far too short a price. A far too short a price. They're, they're under one to four with some Ooh. firms, which is... Absolutely outrageous. Um, I mean, the, the bet for me is Aston Villa plus a half on the Asian handicap, which is 18 to 5, which I think is an absolutely massive price. Basically, uh, plus a half on the Asian handicap means all Aston Villa have to do is, is avoid defeat. Mm. And, and the bet implies around a 22% chance of, of Villa avoiding defeat. They've got a much better chance than that. Arsenal don't win that many home games. They failed to win 40% of their home league games this season. 
34 percent since the start of last season. Good and Villa uh, are not bad on the road. Uh, mm. They've only they've avoided defeating 47 percent of their away league games since the start of last season. 45% this season. So the form lines are quite steady for Arsenal and Villa in terms of winning and avoiding defeats home and away. Looking at the form lines, I'd say this should be more like a 6-4 to four shot, to be honest. I mean, I think Arsenal should be more like 4-6 to six, and uh, Villa will draw at 6-4. to four. I, don't, I think 18-5 to five is an absolutely enormous price on this. And it's a great time to oppose Arsenal because they're in great form. So the odds compilers and punters are overrating them based on four straight wins. Um, which Arsenal can do at any time. You know, they're, they're, I'm not convinced they're anything better than a fourth-place team, as they always are. Uh, Villa are well capable of getting results on the road as well. They've played five away games at top-half clubs this term, and they've only lost two of them. Uh, they drew 0-0 with West Ham, which is a good result. They also won 1-0 at Liverpool, sure. and they won 1-0 at Stoke, which is looking at a fantastic result, given the way uh, Stoke are going at the moment. So, And also, finally, Paul, Villa have a good record at the Emirates. Uh, I'm sure Tom will, will know that. Uh, they're eight away games at the Emirates. Uh, they've avoided defeat in five of them, including a 3-1 win in this fixture last season uh, on the opening day. So Aston Villa plus a half, 18-5, to five, I think looks, looks a really nice bet. Going for a mini shock. Now, the problem is when, of course, Tom previews a match involving Aston Villa, well, how much does he get carried away uh, by his heart? Well, I can tell you, having worked with him for the best part of three and a half years, four years, that that is never the case. He's straight up, he's matter-of-fact, so the question to ask him is, can you duplicate last year's 3-1 victory? Um, I don't think we'll cover the minus one um, <laughs> in the cap of the game, but um, I do agree with Simon. I, I think Arsenal are too short a prize of 13-50. to 50. I've been a little bit less positive with my selection. I've actually gone Villa plus one and a half on the Asian handicap. Still a really decent prize of 2.25 on the exchanges. Um, I, I just think Arsenal have looked far from dominant in quite a few of their home games against lesser opposition so far this season. Mm -hmm. They drew 2-all with Hull yeah. back in uh, October and were lucky to draw that game 2-all. Scraped a 2-1 win on the opening day against Palace with an injury time goal. Uh, only beat QPR 2-1 and QPR are absolutely awful away from home just after Christmas as well. So they've actually only covered a, a plus 1.5 handicap um, 37% of their home games so far this season, which isn't particularly it's impressive. unbelievable, actually. Suggests that they're not beating yeah. teams comfortably uh, as um, a price of 13 to 50 on a home match uh, suggests they are. And um, then there's Villa. I mean, obviously it's well documented that Villa don't score too many goals, uh, only 11 so far in the league this season. But their defence is really good, and that's something that gets overlooked because it is a positive stat, and, and I think people like to focus on the negative ones. But they still have the best defence outside the top four, very rarely do they lose by more than a goal, um, ignoring the 2-0 defeat uh, in the Premier League last time out. Got a few players coming back from injury as well. Delft should be fit for this game, which is a big plus. Kieran Clark back from suspension last mm -hmm. week, so he'll play with um, Horace Acore at centre-back. Got Carlos Gill, looks pretty good at the moment. Um, he's got a really good, a good goal. goal. What a goal! What a goal! It was a really good goal. And, uh, and obviously it does suit them playing away from home a little bit more, because they will play on the attack. And I think they can feel a more solid look inside than they have done, been able to do uh, in other games so far this season. Um, they won't have to play Vyman and Leg Bottom for this game, which just hasn't been working at all well for them because uh, they're just not creative midfielders. They're just not creating any chances whatsoever. And, and as Simon said as well, Villa have got a really good record at the Emirates. Uh, I'm not sure if it's the best record of the Premier League teams, but it's certainly pretty good. I think they've won... Three, maybe, yeah, I think they won three times so far since Arsenal moved to the Emirates. And as Simon said, avoided defeat in five of the eight matches and covered this handicap in six of eight matches. So I'd just go Villa plus one and a half, a little bit more negative. Uh, best price, 2.25. Did you see the sparkle in Tom's eyes as he read out all those stats? Villa possibly, with the best record, let us know if you know different, uh, at Arsenal since they moved grounds. I have no idea at all. All I know is recently they've more than held their own. Let's go to St Mary's. Southampton versus Swansea. Third versus ninth. And Southampton hops have conceded seven goals at St Mary's this season. Yeah, The second best defensive home record in the Premier League. Yeah, they've been uh, they've been unbelievable at the back. They Southampton, have. it must be said, and and I'm sure Southampton. There'll be a lot of accumulators rolling over onto Southampton on Sunday at four o'clock. I feel uh, a butt coming on here. Well, oh. yeah, it's not it's not a butt. It's uh, well, it is a butt actually. It I, is I, a I, butt. I wouldn't, I wouldn't, I wouldn't back Southampton. I wouldn't okay. back Southampton. I think 
they're short enough, yeah. you know, 16 to 25 against uh, a Swansea side, admittedly in poor form and have lost key players, but still... Very good key players, I like that. Uh, key players, yeah. Very indeed. good, yeah. Um, nice. But still, I, 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 wouldn't, I wouldn't oppose Southampton, but I wouldn't back them. I think okay. they're, they're a bit too short, but they're not short enough to oppose, if, if you get my drift. Yeah. But there is a bet I really like here, Paul, okay. um, and it's over two and a half goals, which is a best price, 23 to 20. Wow. I really, I really think it should be odds on. Um, I know Southampton have a good defence, but they've gone over two and a half goals in 55% of their home league games this season. Mm -hmm. Swansea have gone over in 60% of their away league games this season, OK? So on this season's stats, this selection, purely on stats, should be odds on. So why is it odds against? In my opinion, it's odds against because Swansea are low on attacking firepower because, obviously, Wilfred burney has gone to Man City, Gilfie Sigerson suspended, Key, as you said, is off on international duty. However... There's a few reasons why I don't think this matters too much. Firstly, Swansea actually have a pretty good squad. They've got players like John Joe Shelby. He's not a bad player to come in. Bafatimi Gomez, if he's still there, is a good striker. Jefferson Montero has been quite handy on the wing. Nathan Dyer's fit at the moment. They've got OK backup players. I think if they're given a chance, they'll be OK. Secondly, um, Swansea are shipping goals all over the place. They conceded uh, 16 in the last six games. And if you saw the Chelsea game and they lost 5 0, they were absolutely well, they were appalling. But that just means Southampton could cover this overline by themselves. You know, Southampton, the way they're playing, could easily score three by themselves. So um, I really like over two and a half goals at 23 to 20. I think Swansea's uh, personnel issues have been overstated a bit. Goals galore, over two and a half, odds against 23 to 20. Hops had a good record in last week's FA Cup as well. He's slammed mm -hmm. in a, a few results as well. And mainly, I think you're, if you're just joining us for the very first time on the Easy Odds Premier League video cast, mainly uh, the boys give you offers, give you bets of recommendations over uh, even money, uh, odds against. And that's what we are, of course, looking for uh, mainly here on the video cast. Best bets will come up very shortly. Southampton, Swansea. Uh, Tom, do you see goals in this game? Yeah, I don't. I don't disagree with Simon. I mean, I went um, under in a Swansea game not too long ago, and they went to West Ham, and it was three-one. It could be a very similar game like that because uh, West Ham dominated them on that day, and Swansea looked pretty good themselves. So I certainly wouldn't disagree with Simon there. All right. But um, for me, I, I would just be looking to take on Southampton. I think they are a little bit too short. Uh, best price sixteen to twenty-five. Some firms have gone as short as four to seven on Southampton. It, Sort of understandable, they've got a really good home record this season, but they're not that good. They're mm. not absolutely outstanding at home. Mm. Uh, they lost last weekend, of course, at home to, at home to Palace 3 2. Uh, they've won just two of the last seven matches at St Mary's. Up to five key players missing for this game as well. It, crucially, Wan Yarm and Schneidlin will be missing. I'm not going to say the name of the centre back who's missing again because. Yeah. Big boy, isn't he? He's quite big. Yeah, yeah. I can never get it. I can never pronounce it right. No, I'm not going to yeah. try, but um, yeah. Toby. Be missing, yeah, big Toby. So he'll be missing from this game as well. And Swansea are, are inconsistent. Their format at the moment is quite inconsistent, but they're not absolutely hopeless as their, their odds are, should, should suggest they are. Sorry, They've lost just 10 of 27 so far this season. Only just over half of their away matches they've lost, so they're not absolutely awful away from home. They won on the opening day. Old Trafford in there, there's Simon there, famously tipped off on the opening day. Uh, they're definitely underdogs, but they're nowhere near as bad as the odds suggest they are here. So I'll just be backing them to um, to get a result here and get Swansea plus a half on the Asian handicap at 36 to 25. Okay, another Asian handicap bet and another odds against bet as well. Before we go to the best bets of this weekend, Hops, tell us about your new uh, Facebook football page. That's right. Yeah, I um, I decided to. Um, sorry, I don't know what I thought. Yeah, I decided to. Um, it's all emotional. I, decided, I know it's really emotional. I decided to start a Facebook page, uh, Paul, because um, people seem to like Facebook. So thought about going there. Uh, so it's uh, Simon Hopper Football Tips. Facebook.com forward slash Simon Hopper Football Tips. So if you give the page a like, basically I post all my tips on there, so they'll go straight into your timeline. Uh, easy money. There you go. Uh, get up to date with the hops. And his best bets, Tom, let's come to you first of all. Uh, best bets, TV or non-TV? I've gone non-TV. I think there's, there's, there's value in a few places. I quite like the look of Palace at home to Everton. I don't keep uh, Fair enough. having a go at Everton. Um, but I don't think Everton Surprised should... Surprised they're underdogs there. Yeah, yeah, I don't think that Palace should be underdogs and Everton should be... No, you're right. Match. You're they're right. right. Palace are almost 2-1 to one to win the match, but I, ha I haven't gone for that one. I just wanted to mention that just in case this one just fails. Just to rile me. <laughs> Fair just enough. to rile you, just in case this one fails, um, so I can fall back on something. But under two and a half goals um, in, in Man United, Leicester looks quite intriguing. Mm. It, it looks a little bit too big at 2.42. United have uh, scored just two goals in their last three matches. Uh, six matches on the spin, they've gone under two and a half goals. Yeah, three of Leicester's last four as well. And I think the bookmakers probably wouldn't give Leicester much of a chance here. So if Leicester don't score in this game... 
maybe I need to score three goals for this to land, and that hasn't happened for quite a while, actually. So under two and a half goals looks a little bit too big a price at 2.42. Oh, a non-TV. Will we get two non-TVs? I think probably not. No, Paul, it's a TV game, best bet for me. Um, it's got to be Aston Villa plus a half on the Asian handicap at 18-5 to five against Arsenal. Uh, this is the best value selection by far of the weekend. Uh, Villa just don't lose as many away games as the odds imply. Arsenal don't win as many home yeah. games as the odds imply. Villa have a pretty much full strength team to take south. Good record in the fixture. Good away results at top half clubs this season. Arsenal being overrated because of just a handful of wins. So Villa plus a half, 18-5. to five. It's all about doing the maths here on easyodds.com with our video cast. Don't forget to listen in to a Cheltenham anti-post PJ and Dunkley as we begin. I look forward to the Cheltenham Festival and there is the lounge video cast as well. Well, the one and only mad dog, Ross Casey, who is celebrating his 34th birthday, will be coming on live for the very latest uh, betting from all over the shop. Sport, non-sport, reality TV. We've got it here on easyodds.com. Whatever you're doing this weekend, stay warm. It's going to be a freezing Saturday and Sunday. And let's hope you back a winner or two, courtesy of these boys.